and welcome to episode 139 of the World of Goldcraft. I am your host, as always, the Lazy Goldmaker of the LazyGoldmaker.com. Um, welcome back to the show. If you're following along live, make sure you post any questions you have in chat, and I'll answer them at the end. Uh, if you're not following along live, then be aware that you can do so at Twitch TV slash Lazy Goldmaker. I record these on Wednesdays. Um, now, of course, the podcast is made available by my patrons that, amongst other things, can get access to my full TSM setup. So if you're interested in that, head over to patreon.com slash the lazy goldmaker. Um, and now let's dive in. Um, and today I'm going to talk about uh, two things. We're going to talk about 9.1 because a lot of the the new stuff seems to be um, relatively finalized. There's not uh, placeholder costs for vestiges and stuff like that. Um, so we can actually we can we can make some predictions and have some ideas about how um, nine point one gold making is gonna play and what the new items are, um, how they might fit into a profession setup, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, uh, and we'll also talk a little bit, or I'll also talk a little bit about um, TBC and some of the trends that I've been seeing in uh, in TBC Classic, um, which I'm sure uh, those of you who play that game are very interested in. Um, now, so for 9.1, we're not looking at an overall like large number of changes for professions or a lot of new recipes. Um, but the new stuff that's coming is obviously very, very, very important. So for the stuff that's coming that's important, that's going to be the Vestige of Origins, which is the optional reagent you use to craft rank 5 and rank 6 leg legendaries, uh, which is obviously going to be a huge market once again. Um, there's nothing that makes people as willing to spend gold as their literal bis items. Um, and then you have, in addition to that, you have new crafters mark. There's a crafters mark three that makes item level, um, oh, I don't remember anymore. I think it's item level 200 and it's slightly more for the crafters mark of the chained one. I can check that. Um, yeah, crafters mark two is three is item level 200 and then crafters mark of the um, of the chained aisle is item level 230 and that's you can equip one of those um, so both of those are obviously going to be really good as most of you will be aware already crafters mark 2 gear sells really really well and i expect the same for crafters mark 3 and the chained crafters mark um, so what's going to be important is going to be unlocking these recipes um, now most of these are from uh uh, all of these recipes are going to be very important to unlock. So what it looks like right now is that um, you do not need any reputation for the Vestige of Origins. Um, in fact, the only thing it costs is 2,000 Stygia. So you should definitely farm up 2,000 Stygia on any of your <laughs> legendary crafters. So you're ready to buy the Vestige of Origins recipe on day one. Um, it, um, it does not seem that, um, at least that's what it looked like on the PTR data on Wowhead, um, that it does not require rep. I'm not logged into the PTR and checked recently, so, um, so well, someone will have to correct me if that's wrong. Um, the Crafters Mark III, you get that from Death's Advance at uh, Honored level. So you definitely want to farm Honored with Death's Advance on any armor crafters you have as fast as possible. Uh, to be the first one to mark it. And then lastly, the chained crafter's mark, or the crafter's mark of the chained isle. Um, it's not from the reputation proper, but it is from the Corthia content. It's from the Archivist Codex Tier 4. Uh, I ha I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to take to get that, but I'm assuming that that's going to be uh, something that takes you more time than getting to Honored with, uh, with, um, with the Death's Advance. So you'll get the Crafter's Mark three first, and then a, a while later, you'll be able to get the Chained Isle Crafter's Mark. Um, interesting to note is that the, the Crafter's Mark of the Chained Isle, they require uh, 15 Arboreal Shards. So that's going to be uh, adding 15 uh, or 1500 gold at least to the crafting cost of that item, as well as all of the materials. Uh, so you're probably looking at items that should sell in the um, in the 10 to 20 go K gold range, even when they get competitive. Uh, which is nice, because that means that you're going to be looking at items where you can can actually generate some, some real volume uh, in gold volume. So they should be quite good when they when they get there. The cost is going to be nice, um, hopefully. Uh, so I'm expecting this one to be pretty good. Um, right now, 
It looks like blacksmithing and tailoring are quite cheap for the chain dial crafters marks. Um, for crafters mark 3, it looks like it's uh, blacksmithing, tailoring, jewel crafting are all still cheap and leatherworking looks a little bit more expensive. Um, so that's how um, how that sort of looks right now. Um, but we'll see because prices will probably change on, on many materials and that's due to something we'll talk about later which is the, the vestige of origins and the materials needed for those. Um, because I think the balance there is going to change a little bit. Or the balance there is going to be different from what it is for Crafters Mark II currently, where tailoring is the cheapest, and then jewel crafting and blacksmithing are pr both pretty cheap, and then leatherworking is just <laughs> ridiculously overpriced uh, due to the heavy calicide price uh, cost. So, the next thing. There is one new material coming, the Corthite Crystals. Um... And these are used for one thing and one thing only, the Vestige of Origins, which means they're used for one thing and one thing only, rank 5 and 6 legendaries. Um, now, we might see some prices with some large swings. It all depends on how uh, quickly you actually generate these. Um, uh, and this is something that I'm, I'm going to assume is good, will be subject to change until the patch is out. So we won't know for sure, but uh, yeah, these will be very highly in demand and if you can find a method of farming these early on, you'll probably make bank. Um, what's interesting is that both rank 5 and 6 require the same amount of Corthite crystals. Because going from rank 4 to 5 will require you to craft a rank 3 legendary with the Vestige of Origins added. And then going from rank 5 to 6, you need a rank 6 base legendary and you get that from crafting a rank 4 legendary with the Vestige of Origins. Um, so, uh, there's no difference in cost between rank 5 and 6 legendaries for, um, in terms of Corthite Crystals. So if you can turn a rank 4 directly to a rank 6, that's going to save you uh, 40 Corthite Crystals. And depending on how expensive that is, that might be a pretty good idea as a buyer. Um, you'll have to ho hold on for 4 weeks though until you get enough Soul Cinders and keep your rank 4 legendary for that time. Um, but uh, it's an interesting tidbit like we won't see like demand will obviously be huge the week of uh, the week people can finally equip rank 6 was right um, but demand is not going to explode it's not going to be like it was with materials at the launch of Shadowlands where every week when you got access to a new rank of legendary every week we got more expensive or a higher demand because you needed more materials for a rank 4 than a rank 3 um so I expect we'll see demand start really strong and then it might fall off a little bit. Uh, and at least until we, the week we can make rank 6s. Um, and then we'll see a surge and then after that point it will start tapering off again. Um, and be in the, the general downwards trend which is what happens to pretty much every material once you're past like peak demand which is going to be the week rank 6s um, can be crafted that's going to be the highest point for demand for sure but it does it will depend a little bit on how much supply we can build up until that point um, so we'll see it could be that the rank 6 uh, crafting peak is lower in price than the rank 5 uh, and it never goes as high as it was at the beginning uh, that's something we'll just have to see um, next up the vestige of origins material balance uh, now, you can craft Vestiges of Origins, obviously, with any any of the four legendary crafting professions. Um, but as with Crafter's Mark, uh, you just create a, a, a generic Vestige that you can use on any profession. It's bind and pick up, though. Um, but that means that there are going to be some combinations that are going to be better than others. Now, some tidbits to be aware of, some important things to be aware of, is that right now, the Jewel Crafting Vestige is more expensive than the blacksmithing one and it doesn't matter what the prices are in your realm because the blacksmithing one takes 15 shadow gas ingots and then i uh, if i remember correctly it's 40 uh lace right or um and then the jewel crafting vestige requires two of each essence now to get two of each essence you have to prospect on average 27 of each zone specific ore uh to craft 15 shadow ghost ingots you need to uh, you need 7.5 of each zone specific ore. Uh, so that means that you'd need 80, in total, 80 ore more from the various zone specific ores uh, for the jewel crafting variant. Uh, and even if, it, like, Lace Drite would have to be so cheap or, or it's so expensive 
relative to the zone specific ore for this to ever work out um or if laser art ore was extremely cheap so you could prospect that for even quantities of ore then maybe j jewel crafting would, would be better um but right now it does look like the jewel crafting one is just strictly worse uh, and you should never craft that one if you have a jewel crafting blacksmith which is right now one of the more optimal combinations in my opinion i have a jewel crafting black blacksmith um crafter um so at that point uh if you have a crafter like that then stock up on the zone specific ores um, and turn a good chunk of them into ingots and then you can keep the rest as ores just to be flexible there might be more changes obviously um, and maybe you end up selling tons and tons and tons of rings and you just need to prospect all the ore for essences that's always a case uh, potential case as well um, tailor ring looks quite expensive the tailor ring vestige um, and what's interesting about the tailor ring vestige is it requires 75 penumbra thread that's a couple of hundred gold in vendor materials, and it's the only vestige that requires vendor materials. Um, so I guess that's to balance the fact that lightless silk and shrouded cloth is very cheap, but it does also require a whooping 400 of each cloth type. Um, and I think the, the leatherworking one is, is cheaper on many realms. Um, so right now, like the tailoring, leatherworking, and blacksmithing, jewel crafting are in my opinion, at least in 9.0, the best combinations to have. Um, and they, s in general, for professions, just to give you ch access to cheap crafters marks and uh, save time because you craft your ingots on the character that uses all of them for jewel crafting as well as blacksmithing. Um, and that also s will probably be a good combination in the next patch as well. Um, because it does look like tailoring and jewel crafting will be the two most expensive vestiges, at least at current, um, most likely. But we'll, we, this will obviously have a huge effect on prices as well. This is just what it looks like right now. That's important to note. Like, this is all going to change demand uh, for, for the materials. And uh, once the dust has settled and we've reached a new kind of uh, equilibrium price in 9.1, it might look completely different and other things might be cheaper. Um, what I would suggest doing is to math out the vestige cost on your realm. Um, it's not that many uh, variables, just uh, find all of the prices for all of the materials and just multiply that by how many you need for each vestige. And then you can figure out what the cheapest options are for your crafters, right? If based on prices right now. And then you can stock up accordingly. So if you figure out that you have a, you have a tailor blacksmithing uh, legendary crafter, and you realize that on your realm, based on prices right now, the tailoring vestige is the cheapest. Then you buy a bunch of cloth, so you're ready to craft a tailoring vestige. And then that's probably going to be cheaper than buying any of the materials just after 9.1 rolls around when everyone is looking to craft. Uh, because we should see, um, around the time of launch of 9.1, uh, a significant burst in prices and demand uh, this has already started people are already crafting or people are already stocking up on materials i am i dropped two million gold on materials this week uh, there's plenty of people in my chat who's done the same thing uh, so people have already started and material prices have started going up a little bit so just be pay attention to that and there's never there's never a guarantee uh, about what's going to happen in the future um, because this time around people can stock up and there's already tons of materials out there. It's not like launch back in November when there was zero materials at launch and we had to farm everything to even craft legendaries. Um, so don't invest more than you can, uh, you feel comfortable with, uh, because you can always end up losing some, you're not going to lose all your gold, but you can end up losing a, a significant percentage, at least if prices have already gone up. Uh, like uh, like Jack in chat right now is saying that light the silk on his main realm is 4 point 42 gold 42 gold that's absolutely crazy I haven't seen price prices like that since like launch week um, but yeah there's definitely a ton of stuff this is all of course based on the current situation um, we won't know if the there's there's always a chance they make some more changes um, but if you want to be prepared, I'd suggest getting a little bit of materials ready to craft vestiges uh, based on what's cheapest right now. Um, and just be ready. Have your characters re raring to go uh, into Corthia and farming the rep for their crafters mark to uh, 
and have enough stygia so you can straight buy um, the vestige recipe and all of that stuff. Um, that's sort of the, the main thing I would suggest for, um, for preparing for 9.1. So that's what I wanted to talk about for 9.1. So now we're going to talk a little bit about some trends and some things I've seen in the Burning Crusade uh, Classic. Um, so the main thing right now, it seems to me most players are still uh, spending their gold and time uh, farming for reputation, for epic mounts, and for uh, getting their crafted gear. And some markets like consumables does not yet seem to really be there. Um, I, I've sold some consumables, but uh, herb prices are still very volatile. And um, it does not seem like there. Some of the consumables are selling for very, very low prices compared to to herb prices, and herb prices will often spike up, and suddenly consumables are not profitable. Um, so it seems to me that people are still not quite there in like parse culture land. They're more focused on gear and epic flying and all that stuff. That um, they're focused on spending their gold on more permanent increases to player power rather than uh, than one-off short-term increases. Uh, another thing is that old world, uh, so vanilla, vanilla classic materials, are exploding up and down in value uh, because there's not much supply anymore. Uh, supply is very variable, and people still need to level their professions to max. Like people still need max, one, they need to level enchanting one to three hundred if they want to get enchanting to three seventy five for the juicy benefits. So there are tons of opportunities with flipping and even trying to control uh, various old world materials. This is something you should definitely pay attention to. Um, enchanting, jewel crafting materials, uh, ore, bars, anything can be flipped profitably. And prices are... Uh, you'd be surprised if you look at some of the prices of old world materials, for sure. Uh, like Vision Dust on my realm regularly spikes up to like w more than one gold. When it was routinely selling for like 20 silver back in vanilla. Uh, because that's one of the biggest bottlenecks for enchanting. And then there are other bottlenecks like Azerothian diamonds for jewel crafting. Or some of the other uh, gems that you get from Torimor prospecting. Um, so that's uh, that's definitely something we see. Uh, I've also seen a couple of vendor shuffle opportunities. Uh, for those of you on the very poor end of the spectrum. They there might not be for everyone. Um, Netherweave could reach uh, Vendor Shuffle land, but when a Netherweave is selling for less than 15 silver, you can craft heavy Netherweave bandages with two Netherweave cloth and they will vendor for uh, 30 silver, so less than 15 silver, then that's free money, essentially. Um, if you have jewel crafting, you can also do something with the, you can craft a purified Jaggle Pearl if you have this recipe. Uh, it requires a Jaggle Pearl and a Vendor Water, a Purified Drainic Water, that you can get for 13 silver. Uh, and this gem will Vendor for 1 gold. Uh, and I can routinely find Jaggle Pearls as cheap as 50 silver, so that's 40 silver in free money per craft. Um, so if you are um, if you have the time to click Crate All, or if you're very poor, then this is something that you can do. It does require you to have Jewel Crafting at about 325 to get the recipe though. Uh, if you look ahead, I expect that once players uh, finish epic flying um, and they get their like crafted gear finished gaming them, then they'll start focusing more on consumables. Um, we should also see in the next reset there should be a lot more level 70s, which means a lot more raid groups going into Karazhan, going into Ghoul, going into Megtheridon. Uh, maybe hitting walls where they realize that um, sending someone back to the auction house to pick up a bunch of flasks or um, some elixirs or potions is going to help them push through. Um, so that is going to uh, that is going to come, and I do expect long term that using overcutting and smart stacking with alchemy is probably going to be one of the best ways to make gold throughout the expansion, just like it was in vanilla or in classic. Uh, but for the moment, the money will be in raw materials, in gear, item enhancements. I'm personally making bank with jewel crafting. Um, and should be um, should be making. I spent a lot of gold on on recipes. I will be spending more gold on recipes once I get epic flying. But for the moment, uh, it's been about three and a half thousand gold per day in sales, primarily from jewel crafting, which is quite uh, quite significant. So that's been a lot of fun. 
Um, so um, so that's that's it for what I wanted to talk about for TBC. So I didn't actually prepare a question uh, today. I was going to look through one, uh, some from posted on my um, on my Discord, and we didn't get any from chat either. Come on, guys, why are you here if you're not going to ask me uh, um, ask me any questions? So um, since we don't have any, then we'll just have to call the episode here. We're still at time anyway, so it doesn't matter because we had some interesting things to uh, to talk about. Wait, says Jack. Wait, says Jack. He wants to get his question in about the lightless silk price. I'm waiting in uh, in fervent uh, excitement. I mean, 42 gold. That's not gonna. What will the lightless price be in the first month of 9.1? I mean, that's really, really, really hard to sell, to tell, and it will depend on the final, how the final demand shakes out. So if we, if we just need lightless silk for the base items and people end up not crafting vestiges with tailoring at all in any significant fashion, then I don't think it's going to be that much more expensive than currently. If the tailoring vestige turns out to be cheap, um, like it, it's it'll be higher, but I I'll I never try to predict like the exact price um in the future. I have a terrible crack uh, cra um terrible track record. I mean that's if you craft with the vestige of origins from tailoring, but you don't need the tailoring vestige. You can use a, a leatherworking vestige if you have leatherworking on the same crafter. Um, but yeah. It'll um, it'll be interesting. I expect that most materials will be higher than they are right now. Um, so like you can, um, you can look at uh, the the closest. I think they're going to be lower than at launch, because we have a large material cushion. There's a lot of items already available in the economy. But if you want to look, there, there, I, the price behavior might be similar. For like when rank fives, it's going to be about the same as when rank threes were released back in uh, at launch. Um, and then it's going to be the same for for rank four. So we might see. It's possible we see prices approaching what they were at launch, but I don't think they're going to go that high because I think a lot of people are stacking up tons of materials ahead of time. Which is gonna cushion the blow, but we could see prices going up with uh, by a hundred percent because right now prices are about one third of what they were at launch, so they could very well double and sustain at that. They could go farther. I have no idea. I have uh, it's impossible to predict, but it's probably gonna be higher than now. Probably gonna be higher than now. Let's leave it at that. Um. So that will be it because I don't I, I whenever people ask me to predict the price of something I just uh, I tap out because uh, I um, there's a big chance that if I'm wrong and someone I don't want to be wrong about this I don't want people to go around and be like yeah the lazy gold maker told me that this is going to hit a certain price point because I am terrible at predicting this these kinds of things and most people are most people are terrible at predicting the future. Um, and if I have to be, I'd rather just try to make gold without having to be uh, correct about the future, or at least not correct in detail. If I, if I can be correct in the broad stroke, and the broad stroke is lightless silk will probably more, be more expensive when you really need lightless silk to craft your tailoring rank 5 legendaries during week 1 of 9.1 than it is right now. Um, so buying lightless silk right now is probably a lot better than, than uh, during 9.1. Then if you can sell for a profit in 9.1, if you're just looking to flip, then just sell for a profit. So, that's it. If you enjoyed the show, you want to read more about gold making, head over to thelazygoldmaker.com. If you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash thelazygoldmaker. Or you can leave a like down below, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, or just listen to this podcast on any of your um, any of your platforms. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a profitable week, guys. Goodbye.